Hi, this is Henning from Flip Normals, and in this video, we are going to go through some of the best features added to Substance Painter over the last six months to a year or so. This software is an active development. There's tons of new good stuff added constantly, and you might have missed some of these. So we are just going to go through some of our favorite new features. Before we get into that, though, I want to talk to you about our latest course, Advanced Character Creation with Ben Erd. This is a fantastic course focusing on how to create this character start to finish. You learn advanced techniques like character sculpting, hard surface armor creation, texture painting, and finally rendering the whole piece, making a really nice portfolio piece. So if you're interested in improving your character art, both organic and hard surface, I highly recommend this course. You're sure to learn a lot from a master like Ben. Back in Painter, the first feature I want to show you is that you can now link the environment to the camera instead of the world. Traditionally, the way you've been able to move the lights around is shift right mouse button, just like this. The problem with this technique has been that everything that's been underneath or on top like this has been practically impossible to properly evaluate because it just isn't in light. They've changed this. And you can now very easily link the environment to the camera. If you go up here to your display settings, and then we just scroll down a tiny bit, and here you can see the environment alignment. And here you can just change this from world to camera. And now you can see if we rotate this around, this is always in light. And you can also, of course, change the uh, rotation of this. So you can just move this around if you really want to have a specific view of this, or if you want to use a different HDRI, which has a different rotation. You can very easily do this. What you can see if we enable shadows is that this actually rotates the light around and the shadows are responding to that. It's also really cool that you can have shadows like this, which just makes the model look much better. We, of course, can turn this off for performance reasons. So this is probably one of my favorite features because I'm going to be using this all the time in Painter. Next up, we are going to be talking about a feature called Warp Projection. This is an incredible feature for warping images on top of your model. The way it works is first you just have to create a new fill layer and then you drag the image you want to use. In this case, we're going to give her a nice little tribal tattoo and you just drag this under the slot you want. In this case, the base color. Then just alt click on the color. Nice little tip as well. Alt click just clears all the other ones. So now we only have that. Then we scroll up a little bit and here you can see projection, UV projection. And we just change this to warp projection all the way on the bottom. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to move the whole thing forward like this. This is the same thing as a plane project, uh, but it allows us to project this each point onto the model. So we can really warp this around. So if you want to give her a nice facial tattoo like this, uh, the controller for this is just W, E, and R, just the same thing as a regular conventional 3D software. And the same thing for the settings you already have in Painter. So we just want to rotate these this around like so, and then we want to give her a nice little face tattoo here on the side. So we can just scale this down a little bit like so. And then what we can do, we can go up here to the settings. We see we have um, some settings here that this is the third icon. If you hit edit vertice, you can now go in and you can, with the move tool active, you can now just move this around. What's cool is that you can enable this little guy, which is going to snap it to the surface. So now if you just hover over this and drag, you can now just snap this to the surface, which is fantastic because this just means you can really quickly warp something around like so. So once you can over all the points, you're now going to have a um, texture which has been warped properly, though you can see that this goes through like so. So there are a few things you can do for this. You can change the projection depth, which is just going to move. You see the uh, uh, the, the green lines and just going to change the depth of this. But sometimes this isn't possible because um, just because of the geometry you're working with. So in that case, what you can do, you can add more resolution to the uh, the actual plane. You do that from the same area as you edit the vertice, which is just a third icon. And here you have three options. You have split crosswise, which is going to go uh, horizontal and vertical, horizontal, which is just going to be flat and vertical, which is going to go down. So now you can see if we choose vertical, now you can see that we have a line going through here and then we can just go in and we can just click on these points. And then now we can add more points. Same thing with horizontal as well. Just click here and split horizontal. You can add another one, split horizontal. I can add it down here and now we can just go through and we can just really just make sure this fits nicely with the model. So a really, really handy feature for really kind of any kind of texture painting like this. Then of course we just go in and we just set this to multiply and then we can very easily just see our result. And of course you can just warp this around like so. And once you're done, you just click on any other layer and the projection is going to disappear. This is actually exactly how we've done it for the, um, the height map you're seeing here, all the pores. So if we just go to height, 
open this up and then we'll go to our warp projection. This is using the exact same technique I just showed you, just that we're using a product here called a Flipmobile's face kit where we have a flat plane, which we're just wrapping on top of all this. And the cool thing about this is so we can still go into this and we can change it around. So we can go to edit vertice, we can just go in here and we can just go in and move this around. It's gonna be a little slow due to computer having a bunch of stuff, stuff to compute now, but it means that you can warp this around very effectively. So I highly recommend this for like logos, tattoos or anything like this. And the advantage of this is that this is procedural. So this means, for instance, if you have a map like this, like in this case, this is just a, a grayscale image. But if you have a color version of this, then you can just duplicate this. And then you can just input the color image, like if you're using XYZ textures and so. So this is really, really useful if you're dealing with any kind of texture data that you have to wrap around your model, like so or warp it around. The next new feature, which is fantastic, is that Painter now supports UDIMs. If we hit F3 now, now we can go into our UV viewport, you can see that this character has UDIMs, which just means that each one of these images here, you can see 1001. This is just a single image, just called 1001. And this just means that we can have a lot more resolution than we can normally. This is pretty much my highest requested feature in Painter, because this allows you to get significantly higher resolution. So this is what this looks like when you're unwrapping something in something like Blender. We can just see that this has just been unfolded based on the UDIM workflow as well, where each one of these is just one specific image. So the way you set this up is you just go to File, New, and then you got to make sure, of course, that you have a uh, an FBX on OBJ that has been unfolded based on the UDIM workflow. Then you go to Select, you just select the file you want, hit Open, and then you don't have to do anything. You just simply just make sure this is ticked. By default, this is going to be ticked. So then we just hit okay. And then yeah, we don't have to save this. And then there we go. Now you can see that this new model now has successfully been imported based on the Udium workflow. Super easy to use, very powerful. And if you were to export this out now, we just back in the last scene, control shift and E. Then you can see that if you go to the uh, the actual template here, you can see that it has a dollar sign UDIM, which just means that the UDIM tag is going to be embedded into the file name. And speaking of exporting, you can now export out as a substance archive or SBS AR file, which is fantastic if you want to have these files be more plug and play in other software that supports the substance archive folder. So what you can do, you can just go under the um, the global settings, you just change the file top from, in this case, PNG, then go all the way down and here you see SBSAR. And now you can just export this out and you are now gonna get Substance Archive files that you can use in other software. They're adding a lot of new things like this, that it's more just workflow friendly, pipeline friendly. It's not a super big sexy feature, it's just insanely useful. So thank you developers of Painter for adding these features. Another feature I'm very excited about is the new eyedropper tool, or rather the improved eyedropper tool. So eyedropping has always been awkward in Painter until now, where hand painting was actually kind of, a, kind of a paradoxically weird thing in a software called Painter. Painting wasn't actually very good. So if you just have an hour paint layer, and if you want to uh, just paint by, by hand here, we can very easily do that now with a new eyedropper tool. So first, you do have to have this window open. So just go down to your um, your base color and just click here just to open this up. And then you can just paint some kind of stuff here. And now if you want to just continue painting, we can now just either just click the eyedropper tool here and you see you don't have to hold it down anymore. You just click it and now we get this color, super useful. Or you can hit the I key. So just I for, well, I, and then you just put it in here and then you can just, um, paint like so. So this makes hand painting much, much easier. So fantastic job again to the, the painter devs who realized that this was a sorely missed feature. I've actually based my entire painting workflow around the fact that you can't really hand paint. So that's something I probably have to revise now with this being such a good addition to it. The next feature, which is absolutely brilliant, is you can now add any item you find here on the asset browser to a favorites. So you can just right click on it, and then you can hit add to favorites. And you can see here on the top, it's going to have this nice little star and it's going to just move up here. So this is really useful. So if you find something that you keep using over and over again, you can just right click on them and put them all the way in the top. And if you want to remove them, just right click and remove from favorites and that removes them. If we were to go to brushes now, you can see that I've already added around seven brushes, which is really useful because this means I can go in, I can just keep painting and I can keep going in and I can just keep changing this around without having to search for the brushes. That was been one of the more frustrating things for me when actually doing hand painting, just because it was 
really tricky to it was not tricky it was just time consuming you just had to keep looking for them all the time so the fact that you can add things now to favorites really really useful stuff the next feature is that you can now apply the current blending mode to all other channels. So let's say we change this blending mode to multiply. You can now right click on it and then you can apply to all other channels, which means that this layer, if we go over to go to the other channels, this is they're now going to have the same blending mode as the one we just changed. So if you want to change all of them at the same time, right click and then apply to all channels. This also works with opacity, which is really useful because we can now just change the opacity of this and then you see now, if you go to roughness, for instance, this is not changed. But if you go to base color now, right click on the opacity, apply to all channels. You can now see that this has indeed changed in all the channels. Just one of those really useful workflow tips. Next up, you can now quickly re-import a mesh, which you can do by going to edit and then re-import mesh. This is going to just keep re-importing the same mesh. So let's say you're texturing the model and somebody else is modeling it. So they might be working on it in ZBrush or in uh, Maya Blender, whatever it is. And they, they will just gonna keep re-exporting the same FBX and replacing the old one. You can now just hit Control, Shift and R or go up here to re-import mesh and now this is just going to be re-imported really qu quickly. This makes iterating much faster instead of having to go in and having to go into project configuration and going in here and changing this up. Next up, there are three new bake types. If you go under texture set settings, mesh maps and bake mesh maps, you can see that we have three new mesh maps. One is uh, height, then we have bent normals, and then we have opacity. So if you want to bake any one of these, you just enable them right here. We are, of course, not going through what these actually are because that's a whole new topic. But at least you can bake height, bent normals, and opacity. Another last feature we're going to be covering is going to be temporal anti-aliasing. A really annoying feature in Painter is that you see the viewport is really jagged around all the edges. It's just jagged, and that's just a general issue. You see the same thing here in the eyes. But TAA, or temporal anti-aliasing, is going to fix that. If we go all the way up here to the display settings, and then we scroll down just a little bit... And here we have activate temporal anti-aliasing. So click this, you can see that everything just gets smoother. This is, uh, you may not even be able to see this in the video. I'm not sure if we can even zoom out in to see it. I'm not sure if that's how it works. Uh, but at least you can see that this should make it quite a lot more appealing in the viewport. So I recommend just keeping this active and this shouldn't really impact performance. So it might take some time for this to activate on heavy scenes. So that's it for the most useful features added recently in Substance Painter. These features are really making a difference in my day-to-day -day workflow. And I think they're gonna improve your workflow quite a lot too. If you have any other features that were not covered in this video, please let us know in the comments below. We'd also be curious to hear what you think Adobe should be focusing on next in terms of features. So yeah, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a comment, like the video and hit the little notification bell to get a notification every single time we put out a new video.